<clears throat> so we talked about it yesterday. We started looking at conjugate pairs. We're going to continue with that here today. But guys, that term conjugate, jot this in your notes somewhere. Basically, the way that I think of it and the way that you should think of it as well is becomes. All right? It means sort of becomes. So an acid becomes the conjugate base. A base becomes what? Conjugate acid. So you will only ever see the term conjugate in the product side. All right? The term conjugate will never be on the reactant side of your reaction. <clears throat> now, we're going to look at full reactions here today. You started doing that a little bit with your homework last night, and I told you guys, hey, try it. Okay? I wasn't expecting you guys to master it. We're going to go over that, All right, but just, just to try it. So I think we went over these yesterday like you were telling me, but <clears throat> regardless, let's go over again as a review. So it's saying give the conjugate base. So if it's telling us to give the conjugate base, what are we starting with, folks? Acids, right? Acids become conjugate bases. So HF, that's an acid. What will be the conjugate base? So first off, acids by definition, what do they do? What would you say, Brent? Yeah, according to the Bronsted-Lowry definition, they donate or give away a proton. All right, an H+. Plus. And that's something we didn't really hit yesterday, guys. Let's do this as review. All right, H+. Plus. If I'm counting protons... Neutrons and electrons. This is a big review that's going on here. You will have to do this. We'll come back and review it more. It's been a while. How many protons does hydrogen have? What tells me the number of protons? Atomic number, right? So what's the atomic number for hydrogen? One. Now, neutrons. How do I figure out my number of neutrons? What's it related to? Is it atomic mass? Molar mass? Those are two terms. There's also another mass term we talked about. Mass, number. number, all right? Well, what's the difference between all those? <clears throat> Molar mass and atomic mass, guys, are pretty much the same. What's different about those versus mass number? What would you say, Ellie? One's the average of all the what? Isotopes. That's your atomic mass. Mass number, though, is a what type of number? It's a, it's a rounded, right? It's a whole number because you can't have part of a proton or part of a neutron. So hydrogen, guys, what's the atomic mass of hydrogen? Those of you who got your periodic tables out? 1.008. Now, when we round that, this doesn't give us a specific mass number, a specific isotope to look at, so we're going to round that. What are we going to round it to? One. So how do I figure out my number of neutrons? Right, so we've got mass number minus the number of protons equals neutrons. So one minus one equals what? Oh, we have zero neutrons here with this one. Now, how many electrons am I going to have with this piece here, this H plus? One? What? Zero. Why zero, Sam? Yeah, we've got a positive charge, folks. So we originally would have had one electron if it was neutral, but we have a positive charge. So we're going to subtract the charge out because we lost an electron. So therefore, we have zero electrons. My whole point, folks, in doing this with you, not just that it's a review, but what is a hydrogen ion? It's just a what? It's just a proton, guys, and that is something critical that you have to recognize, that when we're talking about the hydrogen ion, it's really just a proton. So acids, what they're doing by the definition of Bronson-Lowry acids is that they are donating a proton. That is what's changing within acids and base and in their chemistry is that a proton is either lost or gained. All right, that's a big, big idea. When we come back from break and we start doing the math, we're looking at the hydrogen ion, the proton concentration within solutions. And it relates to their pH and their strength that we're, we'll talk about a little bit here um, today and tomorrow. All right, so that's a big overview of what's happening here is that they're losing protons. Yeah, it's hydrogen ions, but guys, they're really losing a proton because a hydrogen ion is very unique. It's just a proton. There's no electrons. It's just the nucleus of one proton. So our conjugate base to HF is going to be what? F minus, right, because it loses one proton, and it's going to lose one proton at a time. So H3... 
H3PO4 phosphoric acid becomes what for the conjugate base? H2PO4, and then what else? Right, it's got that minus one charge. The hydronium ion, H3, H3O plus is the hydronium ion. What does it become? H2O. Now, there's this term down here at the bottom. You should jot this in your notes. Polyprotic, guys, what does poly mean? Many, right? And protic refers to or sounds like what? Protons, guys. So what a polyprotic acid is, is that it has multiple ions, which really, guys, are protons, or H plus ions, <coughs> can be donated. Okay, a polyprotic acid has multiple protons or multiple hydrogen ions that can be ionized. Donated is really what's happening, but ionized is the better word. I'm going to cross it out. All right, let's. I'm going to change this definition. Give me a second. That's kind of the basic definition. The scientific definition, guys, is it has multiple ionizable. H plus ions, okay? Multiple ionizable protons, okay? So and they're only going to lose one at a time. So like we saw here, we have a couple polyprotic. How would we really describe phosphoric acid? What's a more, um, a more descriptive term of what type of acid phosphoric acid is? Instead of just polyprotic, let's be more specific. How many ionizable protons does that have? Really? Three, right? Because how many protons does it have? Three. It could lose all three of those. So what type of acid, would? what might we call this? Any ideas? Try, a triprotic, guys. This would be a triprotic acid. Okay, this is part of you in your reading that you read about. All right, so triprotic, there's diprotic, and there's also monoprotic, right? HF is what type of acid. It's a monoprotic acid because it only has one hydrogen that it can lose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's okay. Triprotic. Excuse me, I spelled that incorrectly. Triprotic. All right. <laughs> Good call there. Does this make sense, guys? Again, a lot of terms, a lot of definitions. You've got to study them. I'm telling you, make flashcards. Be reading over your vocab every single day. All right. So here's an example. I think you guys have this in your notes. Bottom of page three in your notes. You've got a couple of examples there. I didn't put them on my slideshow. But guys, what we're going to do is we're going to label this as the acid, the base, and then their conjugate pair. All right, so a strategy that might help you, especially early on until you get a lot of practice with this, okay, is look at the substances that look similar to each other. So like, i.e., look at the anions, okay? Those would be the pairs, you, you, the things you want to pair up. So we've got nitric acid and we've got lithium hydroxide in our reactants. Well, which one looks like the other one on the right-hand side? Who do you think we're going to pair up? And if I was going to draw a line to pair them up, which two substances do you think are similar? Okay, acids and bases, that's what we're looking for. This is a little bit more challenging than anything we looked at yesterday, guys. Look at your anions and look for the anions in the product side. Josh? Yeah, look for the, the ones, guys, that have the same pieces, right? Nitrate, bless you. Yeah, it changed what salt or what ion was with it, what cation, but guys, your nit I'm sorry, your anions are going to be the piece that's going to hold together. This is a unique reaction, okay? This is what we call a neutralization reaction, right? Where you've got two strong, you've got a strong acid and a strong base, and they're forming a salt and water. Okay, neutralization reaction is forming a salt and water. Strong acid, strong base forms a salt and water. But folks, your piece that's going to help you the most as we go through and do more practice here today, um, you want to look at your anions. Nitrate is the key piece that you're looking at here. So on the left hand side, HNO3 is what? Acid or base? Acid. How do we know it's an acid? Okay. H, now that's one definition, guys. That's according to like our Arrhenius definition. But what else? Bronson-Lowry, what's happening? What makes it an acid? It what? 
It gives away a what? Proton, guys. It gives away that hydrogen ion. So as we look from left to right, from nitric acid to lithium nitrate, it lost a hydrogen, right? Now, up until this point, we've seen, oh, HNO3 becomes just NO3 minus. If I'd have done that and covered up this, you guys would have easily been able to tell, oh, yeah, that goes together, right? But because there was another piece attached to it, that's what I think confused you guys. All right, but you're looking for that anion. So this is our acid. Why? Because it's losing, it's donating the proton, that hydrogen. So if this is the acid and this is the pair, that, the piece that goes with it, what does that make lithium nitrate? What base? The conjugate base. Right, so guys, the acid becomes the conjugate base. So when you're going through these examples, and we're going to do more here today, you want to pair up the ones that look similar, identify what it was at first, the acid or the base, and then it becomes, we throw that term conjugate in there, and then it would be the opposite of what it was. So the acid becomes the conjugate base. So what does that make lithium hydroxide? A base, and guys, again, Hydroxide is a key. When you see OH in a compound, it's going to most likely be a base. All right, so lithium hydroxide, that's going to go over here. But again, don't worry about lithium here. If this was just OH minus and it became HOH, what is really HOH, guys? Water, H2O. So it increased its number of protons. It gained a proton. What does that make it? Yeah, it's the conjugate acid. I know this is confusing right now because we haven't done a lot of practice, but I tell you, I'm telling you by the end of the day, today with all the practice we're going to do, it's going to make a lot more sense. All right. This sheet right here is on page four in your notes. Let's go through. We're going to identify acid base and then their conjugate pairs. Then we're going to go back and talk about the homework from last night. So we've got water and water. Does it really matter, folks, which is the acid and which is the base? No, it doesn't. So we're just going to label it acid base. All right. Now, let's look at the reversible reaction. Because have you guys noticed that all these reactions, what do they have in them? I think we talked about it yesterday. Yeah, double arrows. Okay, either two arrows, or you'll see it like it is here, where it's just an arrow with, you know, two ends on it. Okay, just means that it's reversible. Acid base reactions are reversible. So, when we look at the reverse, so we're starting on the right-hand side, going back to the left-hand side, H3O is my what? It's going to be an acid. Now, it's on the product side, so what type of acid is it? It's got to be conjugate acid. So we're going to label that as Ca, and then hydroxide is going to be what? Conjugate base. So, folks, as you go through and you're labeling this, is one thing you have to be able to do on your test on Thursday is wherever you see a reaction, immediately write conjugate on the right-hand side because that's the only place you're going to see the term conjugate. It has to be as a product of the forward reaction. It has to be a pro uh, on the product side of the forward reaction. I want you guys to go through the rest of these and practice identifying the acid, the base, and then the conjugate pairs to go with those. If it helps you, draw your arrows to the substances that look similar. So like number two, H2SO4 looks like what on my product side? HSO4 minus. All right, so those go together, which means OH minus and H2O would have to go together. If that helps you, go ahead and do that. All right, acid base, H2SO4 loses the proton. That's why it's an acid. Hydroxide gains the proton, therefore it's a base. But if H2SO4 and HSO4 guys are paired up, what does that mean HSO4 has to be? The conjugate base. Because if it starts as an acid, it becomes the conjugate base. If it starts as the base, it becomes the conjugate acid. All right? So however you remember it, find a way that works for you just so you know which is which. Number three, we go a little bit quicker. All right? HSO4 looks like SO4 minus. All right, like this, those go together, H2O, H3O plus go together, HSO4 minus is losing it, so therefore this is my acid, this is my base, HSO4 is my conjugate base, and this is my conjugate acid. Number four, all right, doesn't matter which water you draw the line to, all right, they both go to one, OH though, hydroxide is my base, hydronium is my acid, and then it does not matter which one you call the conjugate acid or the conjugate base here in number four. Number five, 
<clears throat> this is going to be my base, ammonia. This is my acid, conjugate acid, conjugate base. Any questions? Who can tell me? We did number two together yesterday, so my base here was H2PO4 minus. So when I write the equation, H3PO4 is what I started with, all right? And then I lost a proton plus my conjugate base, H2PO4 minus. Now here I'm starting with my base. Who can tell me what the acid would be? HF, okay? So when I write my equation, F minus plus H plus goes into HF. Now folks, the beauty of these acid-base reactions, if you put HF yields F minus plus H plus, it's the same thing. They're reversible reactions. It, so it doesn't really matter the order that you put your products in your reactants. As I go through this sheet, I'm going to put it as, okay, whichever one I started with is going to go on the left. So if I started with the base, it's going to be in my reactants, and then my conjugate acid would be in the products or vice versa. All right. So number four, who can tell me what my conjugate acid would be to nitrate? HNO3, and what's the name of that acid? Nitric. Nitric acid, which is one of them you need to know. So NO3 minus plus H plus is going to yield HNO3. And you could have written it the opposite way. That's absolutely acceptable. Number five, who can tell me the base? HPO4, is that it? Two minus. So again, when it loses a hydrogen, folks, the charge becomes more negative. You're going to subtract one from the charge. When it gains the hydrogen, so the base, you're going to add one to the charge. So here I've got H2PO4 minus yields H plus plus HPO4 two minus. Number six, who can tell me the base that is paired, the conjugate base of water? OH, OH minus. Folks, water is very unique. Water, and we'll talk about that term here in just a minute, all right? but water can act as either an acid or a base, depending on what it's reacting with. So here we go. We've got water breaks down into OH minus plus H plus. doesn't matter which order you put those in because it's a plus sign. Number seven, I'm going to go through this very quickly. Check your work. We've got HSO4 minus. So we're going to have SO4 two minus plus a hydrogen is going to yield HSO4 minus. Number eight, we're going to have PO4 three minus is our conjugate base. So we've got HPO4 two minus yields phosphate plus a hydrogen. And then we've got ammonium ion is going to be ammonia as the conjugate base. So we've got NH4 plus breaks down into H plus plus NH3. And the last one, the conjugate acid to water is going to be H3O plus. So we've got H2O plus hydrogen ion yields H3O plus. A couple of things I just want to point out. First off, are there any questions? One trick to help you when you're writing the equation out, guys, your charges on both sides have to add up, right? Conservation of matter. You're going to have the same number of hydrogens on both sides. It's just like balancing an equation. You're balancing out your charges, though, as well. If we look at number four here. We've got a negative one and a positive one. When you add those together, what do you get? Zero. Well, what's the charge on the right? Oh, look. It's zero. If we look at number six, we've got zero on the left, negative one and positive one on the right. That adds up to be zero. So your charges, just like when you balance an equation with um, your subscripts and your total number of atoms, they're going to be the same as well. All right. Now, one thing I want to point out, a question really quick. <clears throat> if we take a look at number two, we've got H3PO4 and becomes H2PO4 with a minus. But then... It's also very similar to number five because then we have, oh, look, it was a base up here, but now it's an acid. So maybe is this your question, Gabby, saying, oh, well, how is it now an acid, right, because it was a base? Well, let's take it one step further. Number five, then, take a look and see, oh, number eight. The conjugate base here became the acid in number eight, all right? Folks, this is going back to what we just were talking about with that polyprotic. 
All right? So when we write an acid-base reaction, we show they're only losing one proton at a time. But those polyprotic acids, they can lose up to all of their hydrogens, right? So it started out with three. So it was a triprotic acid. So the first reaction, it showed only losing one proton. But then we can take this that was the base, it can still be treated as an acid and then lose another hydrogen to then make a new base and so on until all of them are losing. So really, two leads into five, which leads into eight. It's the process of losing all three of those ionizable protons in phosphoric acid. So that is, if you take all three of those examples together, that is showing the entire dissociation of phosphoric acid. It's one proton at a time. We only lose one at a time, and then we can continue on if we have more protons that we could lose. Does that make sense? Does that kind of clear it up? Same thing right here, guys, with number one, um, number one, actually, and number seven. One and seven, <clears throat> same thing. This was a diprotic acid. It lost one at the first time, but then it can also ionize and lose the other one. So a lot of those acids, you'll see them in multiple pieces because they can continue to lose all of them. Another example, I don't think that this is in your, is this in your notes? I don't think this one is. I want you guys to go through, again, identify acid base and the conjugate pair. Of this reaction, <clears throat> again, if you need to draw the lines, folks, go ahead and do that. HNO3 is going to pair up with nitrate, H2O, and H3O plus go together. So <clears throat> when we take a look, what is H2O? That's your base. HNO3 is going to be acid. H3O plus would be mine? <clears throat> Conjugate acid and nitrate would be Conjugate base. Is it getting easier? All right. Here's another. Oh, that one's already there. <clears throat> so now, folks, with water, this is something that I wanted to talk about. We've seen water. In this example right here, what was water? What is it here in this example? My base. Over here, though, it's it's an acid. Folks, this is a term that you have to know. Water is the classic example. Amphoteric. I believe it's one of your vocab terms you're supposed to do. <clears throat> okay. It can either be an acid or a base. It depends on what else it is reacting with. And water is the classic example of that. All right. If water is reacting with a base, it acts as the acid. If it's reacting with an acid, it acts as a base. So H2PO4, guys, would also be an example of something that is amphoteric. So your polyprotic acids that can lose more than one proton, when they lose one from there, now this could either gain one, depending on what it is, and become and go to H3PO4. So it could act as the base. It could add a proton here. okay? Or we could go the other way. We could subtract out a proton. It could now become HPO4. 2 minus. This is um, amphoteric as well. Again, it depends on what else it's reacting with. <clears throat> Excuse me. To understand this, you have to know what it means to be an acid and what it means to be a base. Acid is donating a proton. Base is accepting a proton. Any other questions? All right, moving on. A couple other definitions. So we've talked about Arrhenius acids and bases. Bronsted Lowry acids and bases. Now there's also Lewis acids and bases, and these ones get even more crazy, a little bit different definition. Now, where this comes into play, folks, is where you're not dealing with hydrogen. So in this class, we're not doing any examples with Lewis acids and bases. You just need to know them by definition. Okay? A Lewis acid is where you have an electron pair acceptor, and bases are electron pair donors. But the key here is not hydrogens, it's electron pairs. So lone electron pairs in their Lewis dot diagrams. Where this really comes into play is in what's called organic chemistry. All right. <clears throat> we will not get into that in this course. If you go to college and you're a medical, you know, anywhere in the medical field, you'll take organic chemistry. If you're a chemistry major, you'll have to take it. You either love it or you hate it. Me, I hate it. All right. It's all concepts, very little math. You got to know how to push electrons around. So it's very, you got to be able to see it. I don't like it that much. <clears throat> All right. But that's as far as we're going with it. Electron pair acceptor, electron pair donor. You got to know the definition. Again, flashcards is what you need to make, guys, to keep your acid definitions in check, to keep them <clears throat> in order, in line. 
All right, let's talk about the strength. Strong acids and bases, guys, they are 100% ionized in water. Strong acids and bases, they are strong electrolytes because every one of their ions breaks up. They completely ionize in water. Okay, that's what makes them so strong. I'm going to show you guys a demo here in just a couple minutes. All right, weak acids and bases do not ionize completely. They are weak electrolytes. Now they still have charges. They still have ions in solution, but not as many ions. Not as many ions in solution. 